Mr. Clive Shepard, uh, first I would like to welcome you uh, to Doha. would like you to give us an idea, what, what is a blended learning? Well, I have a very uh, broad uh, view of what blended learning is, and I think it, uh, it, and it, essentially what we're talking about is a mixture of different things. Obviously, that's what a blend is, but I think that mixture can be of, of a number of different dimensions. It can be a mixture of different strategies for learning. It could be a mixture in the uh, social context in which you learn. In other words, do you learn on your own? Do you learn one-to-one? -one? Do you learn in a group? That's another thing you can blend within a uh, learning intervention. But it can also be a blend in the media that you use to deliver learning. Are you delivering learning online? Are you delivering it face-to-face -face or through a book or what have you? So blended learning can be mixing a number of different things. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we need to focus on blended learning? What do training managers need to look out for while implementing blended learning solutions? The reason we need blended learning is because typically, historically, what employers have done is employ a single method to, uh, you know, to tackle a problem. So they've tended to approach a, pr a problem with a classroom event or a perhaps a piece of e-learning or perhaps uh, on some on-job training or, or whatever it might be. But in practice, most skill building and, and in organizations, our main task is to build skills so people can perform on their jobs, actually goes through a number of different phases. And as we learn those skills, we need different approaches. So we might need some uh, background knowledge in a particular subject. And we might learn that one way. We might need to to see different skills demonstrated, and that would be something we might do a different way. We might need safe practice of those skills. So again, we might do it, use that a different way. And then as we apply those skills to the job, we need support and coaching and, and resources to encourage us to continually improve. So each of those different phases requires a different approach. Sure. So what's the role of ICT and e-learning in blended approach? Well. I know that in the early days of the use of the term blended learning, it often was seen to mean e-learning plus something else, which I think is, is missing the point, really. The point is that it's a mixture of things. Now, in the future, now in fact, but particularly in the future, we would expect or assume that some of the elements in the mix would, be, would use technology. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not absolutely vital for a blend to include technology. I think it's very much more important that the designer of the blended solution has an open mind and then chooses the medium, the channel, which is best suited. Having said that, I think it's inevitable that technology will play a very major role in most blends in the future. In which way? Well, I think it's, it's, not, it's not because technology for its own sake is going to make learning more effective, but what technology offers is flexibility and efficiency. So that if you want to, as many organizations need to do, to train very large numbers of people very quickly, then traditional methods are sometimes just completely impractical and the technology provides a scalability that just isn't possible with uh, traditional, traditional methods. So we, we are going to have to use technology if we're going to take advantage of all the new efficiencies. And of course, those employers that do their training more efficiently will be more profitable or, 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 or uh, do a better job at delivering their service. Do you, see, uh, for, do you foresee trends uh, for blended learning? Uh, in the future? Trends. Well, there are some very, some very definite trends. I mean, blended learning can be quite traditional in itself in the sense that it could, it could, could be, for example, a little bit of pre-work done on a computer before you go to a, a traditional workshop. So that's quite traditional. But what we're seeing, I think, is um, blended learning uh, changing in a number of different ways. One of those is that um, the elements are becoming more modular and often shorter so where we do things face to face, we do them for shorter periods of time. Where we use um, online media, we, use, we do it for shorter periods of time. Where we have a one-to-one -one engagement with a coach, it's for a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, that's one of the big changes. Mm -hmm. Another one of the changes is the fact that 
the blended solutions are being seen now as something which carries right through to on-job performance mm -hmm. rather than just being about the formal learning bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. It actually follows through into, into the workplace. Mm -hmm. So I think that blended learning is changing. Uh, and, well, I think it's becoming better. Mm -hmm. where, where does the internet and smartphones uh, fit into uh, blended learning? Qatar has a very uh, uh, high level of uh, um, smartphone penetrations. How could they be integrated in the blended learning? Well, I think the smartphones and tablets are particularly conducive to learning. I think, well, particularly tablets. Let's, let's separate them a little bit. Mm. I think if you look at tablet devices, tablet devices are ideally suited to consuming media. So they're also the sorts of devices you have with you when you're in a more relaxed frame of mind, so you're maybe uh, on a, uh, 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 an airport or on a plane or you have some sort of time to fill and you're in, a, uh, in the right frame of mind for learning. Plus, uh, a good thing about a, a tablet is that you're only getting one application, you only see one application at a time, so you don't have so many um, distractions. So tablets are very good for media consumption and learning. Smartphones are slightly different. They're the same software, if you like, but because of the screen size, it's less likely to be used in that way, but they're fantastic devices for getting just-in-time information. Mm -hmm. So where I think smartphones fit in the mix is that they can be used towards the end of a blend when you're trying to provide ongoing support and reference information. Sounds very good. Well, uh, these are good tips. Uh, on behalf of uh, ICT and Society Division and ICT Qatar, I'd like to welcome you again, and we're looking forward uh, for the workshop tomorrow. And I am certainly. Thank you. Thank you.